um, there, that's happening now. There we go. Hey. Right, we are live. Welcome everybody to Tap Chat number, can't remember, 151, I think it was. And um, yeah, today it's myself, no Angie because she's changed her number, can't remember. Oh, is that me? It's not me, haha. Yeah, today. Hang on. That's me. Is it you? That was me. <laughs> Seamless professionalism. Oh, every time. Yeah, Andrea can't join us because she switched her day where she goes to spend the evening with her nan back to Tuesdays. Um, but I am joined by three <laughs> other wonderful ladies. We have Sue with us. How are you, Sue? I'm fine. Hello. How are you? Yeah. Happy New Year. I'm very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you too. <laughs> and, and Carla's back. How are you? you I'm okay, but if I'd known Sue was going to look so glamorous, I'd have made more of an effort. Glamorous? I feel like I need a bag over my head. <laughs> <laughs> Sue's still... always glamorous. She's gorgeous. I'm not glamorous. I'm like back end with tram smash most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> what a phrase Aww. that is. Can I steal that one? Good old Yorkshire. <laughs> Are you feeling better, Carlo? I know you've been under the weather. I am coming at the other end. I'm still a little bit sniffly, and every now and again I have to roll off and find a tissue. And every now and again, if I laugh too much, I cough. You know when you do that laugh that starts in your chest? Yeah. And then you realise there isn't any room in your chest for the laugh, and the cough's there instead. <laughs> and it's just, it's over. So that happens every now and again. But apart from that, I'm I'm on the mend, yeah. Good. I don't feel like Good. I'm dying. I'm not curled up complaining that I'm dying anymore, which I did for three days. <laughs> and we have Lex with us as well. How are you, and Lex? And, and Azumi, and my cat Azumi, who wants to join in as well. Meow, um, she's, she's a very good reseller. She's a, the best one. You know, more, she's more common sense than the rest of us put together, I'd imagine. Probably, yes. <laughs> but yeah, hello. Thank you very much for inviting me on. No, you're welcome. Um, I don't know if Tom can join us. I've sent him a link. Um, Steve may join us later. I don't think he's back yet. Um, so yeah, I, I posed a question that was kind of inspired by a little chat we had earlier. Um, I can't remember how I worded it in the title now, but basically, is reselling just common sense? Um, and I thought that was a good topic. There's a few little um, ways we can discuss this. But if we just start with that, Sue, do you think reselling on eBay is just common sense? I mean, is there much to it? There's a lot to it. There's a lot to any job that you do, isn't there? If you go down into the depths of it, there's a lot to it. But uh, whether it's all common sense depends on your, well, basically a judgment of common sense, isn't it? And whether you apply it because uh, using what you know, it's common sense. Uh, making good judgment, that's all down to common sense. But it don't mean to say that people don't have common sense in a lot of areas, but don't actually apply it to eBay, you know? Yeah. Uh, you can have knowledge on how it works and, and what you should do and you think right I've got the common sense now you go out you buy something for a little and you sell it for a lot and that's that's as much as you need to do but they've also got to apply themselves yeah yeah exactly I think my, my initial thought was that you can break it down into two things I think you've got reselling which when you boil it down it is as simple as you buy your whatever for as cheap as you possibly can on this side and then you've got to sell it for as much as you possibly can and you want that gap in the middle to be as much as you can that's it and i don't think you need to really overcomplicate reselling beyond that but when you when you bring ebay into the equation it can get complicated because you have to learn the tech side of it yeah but reselling itself i think people sometimes get bogged down in it too much it's it's pretty basic yeah the, I think the, the, workings of it, the workings of it's very basic and it should be easy to learn and people should be able to apply that and and it works out but some are going to have great success and others aren't and i think a lot of that is whether you actually use the common sense that you've got to know that and if you don't get up in the morning you don't apply yourself and you get them on they're not going to sell when you've got a big pile of shame in loft <laughs> it's very true if it's not listed it won't sell no I, I just realized i didn't say hello to the chat should we quickly pop in i can see loads of chat wasn't by we are live so if you're watching this live you can pop in the side chat uh, give us your opinions. Uh, first in today was Adrian, uh, along with Johnny Mango, who's feeling Ill, Ill apparently, so we need to cheer him up. Uh, so welcome, guys. Hi, Claire. Stafford Antiques Million Millionaire Militaria. Good Lord, that's a mouthful. 
Um, <laughs> welcome, everybody. We've got Stu Mandrian, Jason Entwistle, <laughs> Moggy Morg, Richard Payne. Thanks for the Christmas, uh, Christmas card, Richard, by the way, if I haven't thanked you already. I'm just going to scroll down to the end. Loads of people popping in. So, Carla, what were your thoughts when you saw the, uh, the title of this? Well, I think the thing is, like I've always said about eBay, is it requires to, to do well on eBay, you require two idiots. You need the idiot who will sell it to you for less than it's worth and the idiot who will buy it from you for more than they could have bought it from the first idiot for. The problem arises when you have a third idiot in the middle and that's you and that's, that's when it falls apart. So you need to avoid the three idiot conundrum. <laughs> and one thing I've noticed time and time again coming up on, on the chat chat on other reselling groups is people asking questions that make me go, did you need to ask us that? When, if you've got access to the internet and, and is that laziness? Is it a lack of common sense or is it pure laziness? So when people are saying, well, how do I know how much to charge for postage? Is that a lack of common sense or is that I can't actually be bothered to find out? So I'm just going to ask you lot, because if I need to know how much to price them for postage, then I, my, the common sense outside my brain says you need to weigh that and then you go and look it up. Yeah. So, yeah. I think even if I hadn't been reselling for ages, I, I'd be a little bit embarrassed to ask that question when you could just Google Royal Mail price. And the, a page telling you the weights and the prices would appear yeah. in front of you as if by magic. It would take you longer to ask that question in a group. It's not saying you shouldn't, and I'm not put, putting people off from asking. But I find questions. it odd that people are not using their common sense yeah. to find these things out. Yeah. Yeah. And, it and does, if you catch me at the wrong time of night, for example, maybe 10 o'clock when I'm a bit tired and I'm a bit short of patience, what you will get is one, research, two, yes. Three, research. <laughs> yeah. One of my favourite answers to your questions, Carla. Like that, that, was, that was a genius answer. That, that's kind of where this discussion came from, if we be honest. There was, there was a, a conversation about a post. And it's not saying that that post was wrong. Like you said, you know, it's, a lot of people have to start somewhere. We're just saying that sometimes you could just apply a bit more common sense and work things out for yourself. Because my concern would be if you have to get the information from others about how to post an item mm -hmm. how are you going to cope with the more intricacies you oh, know yeah. I mean, one lady has just commented i presume it's a lady although you cannot can't always be sure from a very blurred picture and a username so i'm sorry if you're not <laughs> the username is sandra onye and it says she said not everyone has weighing scales and yes that's true however again your common sense should kick in and tell you things cost more to post depending on how heavy they are surely i will probably need scales for this job that's that's the common sense yeah. element you know when you when you're saying to people well how will i know well you will use your common sense and instead of saying how will i know you will ask yourself how will i find out mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah true very true so lex and uh Azami, <laughs> <what you're doing? laughs> she's gone she's had enough of us already oh she's she's she sat here she's licking her bottom right now oh lovely so yeah, yeah. Look, you, you strike me. Tell me, if, tell me if I'm wrong. As a very sort of straight down the line kind of straight, <laughs> straight talking kind of girl. You think so? Yeah. I haven't sworn yet, so yeah. <laughs> um, right. Well, coming from an educational kind of background as well, because obviously in in my daytime life, I'm also a university lecturer, and uh, what we try and support the kids in doing is that you learn is that we teach them a certain amount of basic stuff. You know yourself. So we give them a springboard and that they then go and do 70% of the learning themselves and the reason for that is obviously if you find out information yourself you are more likely to absorb that information and remember it for the next time so for example the way that I learn is that if I um, say for example if I needed to post something that was a meter and a half long I could come and ask Sue what would be the best you know, way to send this? And she could tell me, and I will forget that within 10 minutes. However, if I go and Google that myself and find out and do it practically, I will remember that for next time. So you're more likely to retain that information if you go and research it yourself. That's what I found. Right. So putting the work in yourself actually pays off longer term. Yeah, absolutely. You remember it for next time, don't you? And I think that should be instilled in the kids well before college or university you know I <laughs> from our upbringing from being very very small was if you want to know how to do something 
self-taught is one of the best ways to learn and then you had to get on the bus and go to the library and sit there for hours and look now you can just google and like carla says if if they've not got the for want of a better word round here nonce to think i'm going to need scales or That's it. I'll look that we've up all or, got all that information right in our pockets yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm Sue's generation. We had to get on our little bike and pedal off to the library and find the right book before we knew anything. Yeah. And then the book might be 20 years out of date and so the information we were getting was still not necessarily right. So when, when everybody's got the the information literally at their fingertips, and I'm wondering if it's because we've brought up a generation of people who don't bother looking things up themselves because they'll just ask someone else. Maybe that's what it is. See, I don't understand why it's easier to put a question in to say how big is a large letter? When they could type into Royal Mail, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice finder. Yeah. Another thing that I was thinking earlier is I remember looking back to when I started on eBay. There was basically nobody else to talk about how it works anyway, and you know I I just fumbled in the dark and kind of made it up as I went along, and and that has stayed with me. I, I don't yeah, tend to ask, I don't tend to ask for help even when I really need it. It's a bit of a problem I have. I'm getting better at it these days asking for help, but. I'm very independent minded that way anyway. But I was thinking today now, let's say somebody stumbles across Carla's channel and then they might stumble across me and other resellers. And there's this wealth of information. They find the Tat Chat group, the Facebook group, and you go in and you're overwhelmed with all of this detail and people stressing about returns, people stressing about different couriers and all of this. And I think if you come into it blind and then you think this eBay lark is so complicated, there's all these people talking about all this detail and everything. Whereas I still think it's basically really simple. It doesn't have to be more complicated mm -hmm. than list it and sell it. Hopefully sell it for more than you bought it if you're trying to make money. And I think the rest of it needs to come later. I've had many people come into reselling through finding my channel and they're overwhelmed with the amount of information. And I just say, what I say to most people is find some stuff and list it. Don't read all of the forums and stuff. Just have a go yourself. You'll find out what you really need to know. And then when you have some questions you really can't answer yourself, then I'll start asking those questions. But jump in. I think the amount of information available can almost be a barrier to some people and it frightens them. Would you agree with that? And I think maybe the thing is that we didn't actually have anybody to ask. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't that sort of easy ask the question of anybody. I mean, it, you might have your family at home, but once you left and you went and you got married, you, we didn't even have a phone. You couldn't, you know, you'd even got to go back down to a call box if you wanted to ring somebody and ask them something. So, yeah, it were better to find out lots of information from reading newspapers, watching TV, going to the library. And like Lex said, once you've seen something or you've written it down yourself or whatever, you tend to remember it more. But it's easy now, isn't it, to just ask? Yeah. I was just trying I to... I remember, like, my my sort of first uh, reselling job, I guess, was back when I was about 15 years old. And I used to make copies of... Um, I had cassettes with, um, like, live audio recordings of gigs of, like, indie bands. And I would tape to tape, you know, record them on a C90 tape and sell them off to someone else. Um, obviously, didn't have the internet or anything back then. It was just, I put an advert in the back of Select Magazine or Enemy Magazine advertising that I had these tapes. And I worked out that each tape would cost me 69 pence to make with a cover that would cost 10p and an envelope that cost 20 pence and a stamp that cost 70 pence. And therefore, those were my costs. And I would sell them for six pounds and the rest was my profit. And it really is as simple as that, isn't it? Can be as simple as that. Yeah. Although interestingly, I think some some of what you just explained, there's a big part of that that some people do fail to think about. And this is a big part of the common sense of reselling. Because I said earlier, it's as simple as buying this for a pound, selling it for a tenner, and what's in between is what you make. But it's not, is it? And you you rightfully said that your costs have got to come out of that, which would be your your platform fees if you're selling on eBay, PayPal fees, cost of the envelope, and all of these things, you have to be aware of that. It's very basic accounting, but I think sometimes people do miss out some of the important information, and that you could class as common sense. It's not the difference between the buying and the selling price that's your profit. You've got to take out everything else, petrol to go and pick up an item or drop an item off or whatever it is, that's got to be included. Your time 
is also included in this. So, yeah, I think those are things that people forget about a lot of the time. Yeah, I think I would say it's not all common sense, but without a healthy application of common sense, you're going to struggle or you're going to annoy the people around you. I suppose it's a bit like going to any new job. You start in any new job and your new colleagues are prepared to give you a bit of leeway because you are new and because you are learning the ropes. And so therefore they will probably be happy to tell you where the toilet is. They may not be quite so happy to tell you how to open the door, go in and sit down on the seat and lock it behind you. They may find that that is a little bit, you should be applying your common sense here. They're probably quite happy to show you where the photocopier is but if you're too stupid to plug it in they might they might find that a bit difficult so it's that kind of it's that application of common sense and thinking you know am i am i exercising my own brain enough here or am i just relying on on other people I, somebody's just said in the um in the side chat that you know you with two hours on youtube you can find out everything you need to know about ebay up to a point up to a point however you can also find out in two hours on YouTube, you can also find an awful stuff on YouTube that you didn't need to know, that you won't use, and that will actually send you veering off into the wrong direction if you're not careful. So one of, one of the um, drawbacks of YouTube is that some of that information has been out there a long time. If you watch one of Nick's videos from five years ago, you might find him picking up and showing stuff in a hall that he would quite happily walk past now. Oh, yeah. He knows it's not worth having these days. And so that's where your application of common sense comes in again. It's looking at it and going, okay, if this is five years ago, I, I, I don't need to blindly go out and, and buy whatever Nick bought five years ago, you know? Yeah, yeah, do your own research. That's what mm -hmm. that comes down to, absolutely. Don't take anything literal that you see on YouTube, either. not all the time. There, there are some interesting comments coming. Gary, who is Southwest Fellows. <coughs> am I echoing? No. Um, yeah, I am. Where's that echo coming from? <laughs> oh. Um, he says, um, self-taught, not many sellers on YouTube five years ago learnt from my own mistakes. Um, and that's the best way to learn, surely. Yeah, yeah, because it stays with you. Exactly what you were saying earlier. If I really screw something up, I, I don't forget that. You know, but if somebody tells <laughs> me not to do something, I'll instantly have forgotten what they've told me not to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Indie Chick had an interesting point, and I've just <laughs> lost it. Oh, somebody's catching in. What's someone sold? That's me. It's a Slimmer World book. It's Slimmer World book season. Way. <laughs> um, Indie Chick, sometimes people ask for help to spark some contact with other resellers. It's difficult to build that connection as a newbie. Absolutely. And, and don't take this the wrong way. We're not having a pop at people asking simple questions. It was just a springboard for a discussion, really. Um, and if you do have basic questions, please continue to post them in the chat chat group. They will be answered. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, let's see what else is in the chat. Uh, Rocky Rose says, I make more money the harder I work and the more effort I put in. Funny that, isn't it? There you go. That's going back yeah, to that you. This is why I'm very poor. <laughs> Yeah, well, I know full well if I worked a lot harder, I'd earn a lot more money. For me, it's that balance of how hard do I actually want to work? Mm. That's the question that I keep asking myself. Mm -hmm. um, it always is like a little bit. Um, sorry, Carla, you carry no, on. No, no, you go on. No, I just, uh, it's always, like, it, it, you get reminded every time, you know, when you've stopped listing and then you start listing again. And then you go, oh yeah, it's listings. That's the thing that makes the, the same. Oh, no, like right. it, every time. <laughs> oh. I know it's like yesterday. I spent all day going through my inventory, adjusting prices, cancelling old good till cancelled listings, refreshing them, and re-uploading them. And overnight, we had a bunch of sales of stuff that we've had forever. It's like, Nick, it really is that simple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, go through old listed stock, tweak the prices, tweak the title, whatever, relist it, and boom, sold a few. It's like, wow. Two things I've just noticed in the chat. One is that Thailand Hammond's made a really strong point, which she said, some people aren't used to making decisions for themselves if they've worked for a boss for a long time. So maybe that's a really key thing is that if these are people who are coming out of employment and going into self-employment, the idea of being autonomous, the idea of not having someone go, this is what you do today, off you go, chop, 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 mm. is, is overwhelming. I think that's that, maybe some, that's something I hadn't considered because I've been semi-self-employed for a billion years since God was a boy, you know? So it's, 
I've always made my own decisions. One of the reasons I'm not very good at being employed is because I make my own decisions. I'm not going to listen to you. You're an idiot. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> maybe I that's something I hadn't considered. I think we end up going too far the other way and, and not very good at taking advice once Absolutely. you've been doing it. <laughs> yeah, but I think that is a really good point, actually. And I think I think people almost, they, they look for the right and wrong. I get a lot of questions, what's the right way to do this? How should I do this? How do you do this? And I say, well, this is how I do it, but mm. you know, try a few things and see what works for you. It's like the age old auction versus buy it now or all of those questions. It's like, I found out what works for me, but it might not work for you, so try a few things and, and yeah, see what... Yeah, I watch other people doing their package, and I'm like, oh, I don't I want to do it like that, or oh, they're picking their orders, I wouldn't store my clothes like that. But that doesn't mean it's not right for you. Yeah. It's just, it does but, just, it just, yeah. But going back to what you were saying, I think some people do almost look for somebody to tell them the right way to do it, as if there's a right and wrong. And I think yeah. in reselling, there isn't necessarily the right and wrong. There's, in my head, right and wrong for how I would do it, but... I wouldn't want to tell somebody that things are right and wrong because somebody else like you guys will probably do things completely differently to me and that's mm. fine. It's like fragile tape. A lot of people swear by putting fragile tape on their parcels. To them, that's common sense. If it's fragile, your market's fragile. I'm completely the other side. If it's fragile, the last thing I'm going to do is market is fragile because I think couriers are dickheads and will play <laughs> football with my parcel if they see that it says fragile on it. So to me, it's common sense not to market as fragile. And I can see why some people will go, well, that doesn't make any sense at all. So again, it's, it's we, all, we, we all have our own beliefs about whether we're doing things right or wrong or whatever. I read somewhere that um, courier drivers read fragile as football. Yeah. <laughs> I could believe that. <laughs> All right, let me see what's in the chat. I'm way behind. I'm just trawling through to see what's uh, going yeah, on. Phoebe's just said self-employment really isn't easy when you first start out. If you've not been involved in business previously, research that rather than what sells on eBay first off. Yeah. Do you think our backgrounds from before reselling kind of counts as well? Because um, I was in retail beforehand, you were in retail beforehand. I always kind of knew about profit margins and things like that from being in retail. So do you think that's kind of an advantage for us perhaps? Mm, I think that's it probably is an advantage if you've got some knowledge in profit and loss and, mm. you know. I think what, what helped me coming from a retail background was dealing with customers and dealing with the basics of customer relations. I think that really helped me. Um, so yeah, probably. I think I think it is. We forget that it can be daunting selling something, sending, send, selling something remotely to somebody that you, that you don't meet, and you've just got to trust the Royal Mail. You know, even sending things through the post that's a big barrier to a lot of people. They may have never sent a parcel through the post. A lot of people don't on a day-to-day -day basis. We become so blasé about sending off, you know, in my case, an amp or, or some electrical equipment. To a lot of people, that is a completely stressful operation. And so that is a big hurdle, I think, to get over. But I think that comes with comes back to, I, I say to people, just do it. Once you've done it once, you'll learn a few things. And then the next time you do it, it'll be easier. By the time you've done something five times, it is kind of common sense by then, if you see what I mean, because you've learned not to fear it, I guess, and, and what works. It is when you learn from that, though, isn't it? Because some people still don't learn from what they've done. Like, they might send a mug out and it gets smashed to bits, and then they slate in Royal Mail or Hermes or whoever it is that it got smashed with. But send another one out, swearing blind that their packaging was adequate, <laughs> and it's the courier that's at fault. Yeah, my first couple of mugs went out in a fairly mug-sized box. A mug-sized box is not good enough to send out a mug in. No, nope. your mug needs to be in a massive box. <laughs> yeah. and, and and that took trial and error. But again, it like it's the common sense. It's learning from. Okay, I, you have to assume the worst mm -hmm. and package your parcel with that assumption in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forever have Zaheer in my head kicking his parcel around his living room <laughs> when I'm packaging. And you're right, if you're packaging a mug, you want about a mug-sized barrier all around it of packed newspaper. Yeah, so yeah. when the courier kicks it like a football, he's not actually going to... Get all that impact. That mug. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I do love the questions when they appear of like, oh, I've got... Um, you know, a tea service to send or, you know, what's the best way to send these like load of plates? And in my head, I'm always going, ah, just stick it in a poly mailer, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, stick it, stick it in an old Tesco yeah. carrier bag and just tie the end up, it'd be all right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
Karin's just said, question, what's the funniest thing you've been sent something? And mine is a bread bag. She's been sent something in a bread bag. No way. <laughs> Uh, mine was a black bin bag full of Sylvanian families' buildings and stuff, just put in just black bin bag. No. It arrived with holes in it and Royal Mail tape all over it where they tried to stick holes up as it were coming along. You see, I oh. received a little crystal angel, you know, kind of like tiny little carved crystal angels with really delicate wings. And they'd, they'd packed it really well. They'd, they padded it for the journey. They had wrapped it in sanitary towels. Clean ones. <gasps> Clean ones, don't get me wrong. They were they, they were new sanitary towels, but they'd obviously looked around their house and gone, haven't got any cotton wool, haven't got any bubble wrap. What can I use? <laughs> I had, wow. about, had about ten always with wings wrapped around my angel with wings. <laughs> I think that that's two good examples of a complete lack of common sense, sending a load of Sylvanian families just in a bag through the post. I mean, surely something would tell them that's not right. Yeah. But I quite like the sanitary towels to wrap a little crystal angel in. I think that's that's using your mind, isn't it? It's a bit well, weird, but it's still... Know what can I use? That'll have to do. Intellectual <laughs> thinking. One that sticks in my mind, I can't even remember what I received, but it was something that was padded in a box. I, I tend to use um, wallpaper or scrunched up newspaper to void fill. This person, it looked like they'd emptied the contents of their bin in it. So there was like mm. yogurt pot and, a, you know, just crisp packets and all of that. The thing is, it did the job, but it was just a bit gross, you know. <laughs> just bring in, yeah. <laughs> um, That's kind of wrong, though, isn't it? Just wrong. Yeah. Sai Booglass Debt Free 2019, which is a heck of a handle, says a vintage aftershave bottle wrapped in a nappy. <laughs> wow. Um, Catherine's had something arrive in cling film. <laughs> Just cling film. Just cling film. <laughs> With a stamp on. <laughs> um, I'm just reading. I'm going to go to the bottom of the chat. Okay, random one this week. I I, I order big bags of pork scratchings. So I freaking love them. Something in a flavour. Lush, right? Pack of six, big things. Um, they sent them wrapped in a bin liner. So, and obviously they've been crushed in the post, turned to dust. A message to seller just going like, this isn't really the best packaging, mate, because, you know, they were all kind of crushed. They're not pork scratchings anymore. Um, he apologises, says that he'll refund me for the burst bag and whatever, um, but that he couldn't send them in a box because it would cost him too much. And I was like, mate, you're actually wrong. £2.95 in a box, Royal Mail, it'll fit in a small parcel. And he actually replied and said, thank you, I'm a new seller on eBay. Thank you for that advice. I didn't realise this. So there we go. <laughs> and I said, look, mate, you can keep your money as well. It's fine. <laughs> and that's something else that's something else maybe newbies don't realise is that boxes cost the same as mailing bags. It's it's not about yeah. the you know, just because you put it in a box doesn't mean it'll cost you more to send. It's yeah. I mean yeah. potentially the weight will go up. If you go over a weight barrier, it might. Mm. But but yeah, it's the volume of the of the parcel. So yeah, and these are the things that that's not necessarily common sense, but using common sense to find that out, just having a discussion with the person at the post office, they'd have found that out in seconds. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's using using your noddle. Oh, I've just yeah. had a super chat. I've, yeah, you've got a super you know, chat. I was just about to say that. Oh, wow. Thank you. Stafford Antiques Millionaire Military. It's not easy for me to say. Thank you very much for the five pound super chat. They say, have a nice day and a coffee on me, pal. All the best. Thank you. I will. Well, I won't have a coffee because I don't drink coffee. I'll have, I'll have a beer, maybe. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, a friend of mine received a large item recently packaged in old bed sheets. Nice. That was George. Lovely. <laughs> uh, Catherine says, yes, just cling film with some, car uh, with some cardboard tube. Unfortunately, it had rained. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Somebody earlier on asked Sue what made her get into reselling. That was quite a long way back at the chat, and I can't remember who it was, but it said, question Sue, what, what made you start reselling? Um, well, it wasn't exactly reselling as much as selling on eBay initially, because I was selling the cake decorations and stuff. Um, but it was from my daughter suggesting that I tried selling them on eBay, because I, I enjoyed making them and stuff, so I did. And I was at the point where I was hating work for the man as they say 
<laughs> and uh, my nerves were getting stretched and stretched to the point where, you know, when people said they left work in a flurry, it was a bit like going in every day and going, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't, I just can't do it, and making yourself do it. And then one day it snapped and I just couldn't do it. And I threw everything on the floor, locked the door and put the keys through. And uh, then I had to think, right, so I, I picked up the business with the selling the, my own crafts and things. And then from watching Nick, uh, I was looking up for postage options. And uh, I thought, oh, I'll have a look on YouTube and see what postage options people are using and things like that. And, and that was one of your first videos, Nick, with your, uh, what was what were it called, then drop and go or something? Oh, I think that was, yeah, I just had an online business account then. Yeah, that's it, online business. And that was my first video with it. And I thought, oh, I could sell some stuff out at wardrobe. To... And anyway, I ended up enjoying that more than having to stay up till midnight making stuff. <laughs> so. so you used your common sense, Sue, to uh, look on YouTube to find out about postage. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but if you now looked at that video it's all out of date and i don't think you can even get an account like that <laughs> no but they keep popping up i still enjoy watching them <laughs> yeah i need to do a new one about click and drop actually because people still find that old video which which i think it's handy because it does kind of bring them into the world of reselling that's a lot of people's way to find me is that royal mail video and although the the some of the information is out of date i don't want to just delete it because it's a great way for people to find the channel and get into reselling yeah. but i do need to do an updated one and link it in that video and say by the way this is a bit out of date watch this so yeah i'll have to do that um i don't know what's going on with stafford antiques there's some some of the comments been deleted i don't know what's going on there um has paul says question has anyone had an issue with sending small parcels with a depth larger than 16 centimeters well, then it's not a small parcel royal mail yeah they have size restrictions don't they yeah i i don't have the issues with that because of the account i have um i'm not restricted i just it's just on weights with me but yeah i know in the post office they they there's a certain size hole it has to get through is that right yeah yeah it's is it 45 16 can't remember the other one yeah shoebox size I think. yeah I don't do Royal Mail and Hermes, although they do have the same measurements listed, they don't, um, I don't think they, they bother so much. I'm Hermes as well. It's I don't think anybody at Hermes is standing there with a tape measure going, this is 16 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's just read in here. Oh, Mel's in. Hi, Mel. Oh, hey, Mel. Hey, Mel. Sparrow's end is in. It says, hello, reselling peoples. Yeah, we're just talking about is is reselling common sense uh, just as a discussion point really there was a little bit of when it comes to actually kind of deciding what to sell as well you need to bring your common sense into play there because people say to me well how do you know like not people not other resellers or not not viewers or whatever but people who i know in the real world say to me well what do you sell and i'm like well pretty much anything but not everything and they're like, how do you mean? I was like, well, because I sell clothes, but not all clothes. And I sell bric-a-brac, but not all bric-a-brac. I wouldn't walk into a charity shop and go, I'll have everything on shelf B. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's not, and again, it's, it's a lot of it is um, common sense when it comes to that. And the common sense I apply to clothing sales is if it is from a shop that I would consider to be expensive if I, if I was in the shopping mall, then I can probably resell it. So, you know, when you're walking through the shop mall, you go, Mark and Spencer's, I can just about afford to shop in there. John Lewis, oh, not so much. You know, <laughs> and that, that's kind of you know that's what that's what I apply to clothing sales and various other things, and that's like I said that's common sense. If you if surely surely people leave their house and they know what they would consider to be a premium brand or a mid brand or a lower brand brand, and so you can apply that common sense to your reselling as well. Yeah, I, I do think some of it comes back to when people find. The youtube videos for example or the facebook groups they think there's a right and wrong and they think there's a right way of reselling or stuff you should be selling and that's what they're looking for they're looking for somebody to tell them how to do it and i don't think that's out there really and people who just blindly copy i don't think last very long in this game no and when people ask like what are the clothing brands that we're looking out for and stuff and it's like there's there's thousands we can't 
possibly list all of them. Yeah, the, and list just the ones that are more is shorter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, there could be a clothing brand, a really nice clothing brand, but if the item is super ugly, it doesn't, so it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to sell. Like, you can get a cheap brand item, but if the clothing itself is really nice, that could sell. Yeah. There is no, like, hard and fast anything to this. It's just about experience for a lot of it. Yeah, and then I think when you get into eBay, there are there are details in eBay that, that it isn't common sense. It's just how the platform works, things you can mm -hmm. and can't do, things like the whole Vero thing and that. And that does need explaining. And when, when you come across, and the thing is the platform changes continually and things evolve and change on there. So there are a lot of questions that come up that common sense just isn't relative to that we are all struggling to keep up with. And somebody just mentioned FBA in there. Uh, I think it was Kelly saying, I'm, I'm confident selling on eBay and face to face, but Amazon FBA, I, w FBA, I wouldn't know where to start. And yeah. I don't think there's anything that's common sense about FBA. It's so yeah, that's convoluted. A whole other it's, thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's complicated. And even for me, I've been in it now, what, two or three years it's still not common sense it's just yeah it's hard work but there's a big payoff for me so i i put my through put myself through learning that and luckily i've got some friends who've been doing it for longer and i can go to them and ask questions but i don't think the common sense thing particularly applies to selling on amazon there are elements of it that are common sense but yeah. i think you're right there because i try I'll speak of the devil yeah Hi, Tom. help me out with Hi, amazon a few times how are you all right where are you <laughs> yeah well just in a mystery location at the moment it's not the porch again is it no i'm not stuck in the porch now and i'm not in my loft i thought for a moment you were in your loft but that yeah. with the chimney breast behind you but... that might be my loft actually that chimney breast looks familiar no no i'm just facing a different way that's all <laughs> so we've been chatting about um common sense is is reselling well i might as well go there because i've got none of that so uh... <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you later. <laughs> oh, Wait. sorry, just speaking of like, comment, and subscribe. See the one on the end with the blue hair? At least she's on the end on my screen. She needs some more subs. If you haven't subbed, go and find her and sub. Yes. <laughs> yes. We were going we to mention this on Sunday. Where, where are you at on subs, Lex? One. Me. Yeah. <laughs> one. There must be at least four. All of us, I think, are subs. <laughs> I'm on 900 and something, but um, the other day I made a, a video about frying broccoli for Andrea falling on a bruise and because she wanted to see it. And I lost three subs straight after. <laughs> <laughs> so people are offended by broccoli, not offended by me swearing or funny colour hair or anything like that. They're offended by broccoli. So go figure. It's the Broccoli Protection Brigade. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> well, let's let's see if we can get at least three subs back tonight. We'll repair, oh, we'll repair the damage the broccoli did. How's that? <laughs> if you type something in the chat, Lex, then they'll be able to go and find your channel and, and sub oh. something okay. polite. Something polite. I'll yeah. try something polite. <laughs> yeah. polite? Lex will come up in the chat in a sec under, I think it's Bad Biscuit you come up under, isn't it? I, yeah. Um, <laughs> so click on that and, and go over and sub if you're not already. So yeah, Tom. So you you must... There are some offended people by broccoli. Yeah, sorry, broccoli <laughs> fans. Sorry. Stu Mandridge <laughs> just said Lex should break the one thousand barrier with more burnt broccoli recipes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was going to say, Tom, you must have a, a modicum of common sense, unless none is needed to resell, because you've been full time for quite a while. So you're doing something right, surely. Well, yeah. Um sort of a i suppose what you call it a stumbling through like a myriad of lucky coincidences and happenstance really i was thinking about that the other day that it's just it's like god because i was doing my tax return and i was like how how have i still managed to you know like make this a business sustainably and you know still keep going but i remember when i first started it was just seeing this this cliff face of a learning curve yeah and it's just i think a part look part surrounding yourself with the right kind of people unfortunately that's slipped a bit now and i'm hanging out hanging around with some right dodgy folk but um 
Yeah, so uh, head over to Lex's channel and yeah, let's get over to a thousand. But yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. I think <laughs> <Excuse> you, <laughs> I think gut instinct is is something which is is something you know that goes in sort of in line with common sense. Is that if it's like the adage, if it seems too good to be true, it usually is. I go by that quite a lot. Yeah, and would you say that? I think a lot of time reselling itself is really fundamentally common sense. It's buy it cheap and sell it as high as you can. And I think people get too swept up in the complications and, and ins and outs around it. So I think, would you agree with that? That it is, if you stick to the fundamentals, it's really not too complicated. Yeah, I mean, I see some people in some of the groups in the tap chat, and I remember the UK reselling group back in the day that people would come in and they, they've got this, they've just started and they've got the spreadsheet for this and spreadsheet for that. And this, it was spending so much time not to knock them because everyone's different, but uh, someone spends so much time with the busy work of selling behind the scenes that they would forget about the selling part. Uh, they, or they'd spend so much time over documenting what went on above and beyond way more than the taxman would ever want that they'd lose the profit in the item in the first place. I notice that quite a lot. Yeah. Um, Tom, obviously, like the opposite's true, where someone just doesn't give a monkeys and uh, sells stuff and hopes for the best. But well, it works for me. That. <laughs> That's been working for eight years. Apparently, um, Marge uh, says Tom looks like he's in July. Is it sunny oh. up there? Oh no, I've got um. Well, uh, it's on set. I'll just turn July off. There we go. I think That's... Darren made a good point there as well. Yeah, so uh, no, oh, yeah. I think it looks yeah, like July. Back, back in January now, jeez. Yeah, yeah it, I was saying that about half an hour, a uh, bit over half an hour ago. I looked like I was down the coal mine. I literally <laughs> had like eye shaped things. I've been, um, like, as you know, I've been insulating my loft because I'm storing all my packaging material up there. I went up there and I got some boxes out and they were like, they were like the consistency of chewing gum. They were like so like floppy and soft. This has got a bit weird. Um, <laughs> the cardboard. And um, I thought I, I need to do something about this. So uh, yeah, I've been insulating the loft, but it's a slate roof. So as I'm putting the insulation in, it's like covering me. So I just got this perfect shape of my safety specs. Well, you so, should yeah. have put your safety specs on today. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Did you make a video of, of doing the work up there? I'd have been fascinated with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm filming it as I go, so it's going to be quite a long video, I think. Fantastic. I was going to go live from the loft and do the, hey, hey, it's me, your favourite Steve. Yeah, but <laughs> I thought I wouldn't do it justice, and uh, Carla's the best one at doing accents, apparently. So I can only do Dudley. <laughs> Carla's accent is great. Oh, I can't do it. I'll offend so many people. Nick will do <laughs> subs if I do my Dudley accent live. I'll go for it. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it under pressure. <laughs> um, I was just reading. Oh, sorry. Chat just jumped completely. I think lost Darren it. made a good point earlier. Sorry. Darren made a good point earlier. Um, about newcomers need to know reselling is not a get rich quick method. It takes time, hard work, and not everything um, is a home run sale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely true. right. Yeah, so true. I mean, it's easy to get swept up in that kind of the buzz. I mean, you see the adverts on the start of a lot of YouTube videos that, oh, if you give us 45 seconds, you won't make 100 grand a month and all this. Mm -hmm. yeah, it drags people in. Uh, just noticed Simon Mitchell's in. Uh, he's he's sub to you, Lex. He's hoping you might sub back. Yeah. Remember Simon from the meetup? I think I, I think I did actually. Yeah, I think I've just subbed back. Fantastic. Yeah. I've just subbed to him as well. I need to get Simon back on and find out if he's uh, managed to finish his book. That'd be interesting. Um, common sense. <laughs> Ain't that common these days, says Kelly. I've got a T-shirt mm -hmm. that says that. I've got a T-shirt that says um. Common sense should be called a superpower. 
<laughs> Andy like Robinson's just said, since my brother started reselling, he's taken my scales, packaging, shelving, and lighting. Now he's after my label printer. Reselling is straightforward. It's younger brother's <laughs> <not a> problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I must admit, every time my son sells anything on eBay, which is very rarely, I can tell, because I come into my room and there's bits of parcel tape all over the floor where he's had a rage and the gun's empty and the sellotape dispenser's on the floor and the scissors are on the bed and, and suddenly all my boxes are in shreds everywhere and I'm like, I'm not encouraging you with this reselling business. I'm just not. It's not for you. Is it quite rough where you are then, Carla, if you've got to have a gun in your office? God, yeah. <laughs> you should see where I live. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it's not that bad. bad. Makes Bridge End look smart, my area. And Bridge okay, End yeah, that's, cool. that's true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Luke was asking, he says, I've heard that Royal Mail offer free packing materials for business click and drop users, uh, blah, blah, blah. Does it include the six by four labels? If you've got a click and drop account uh, and you are using those labels, then yes, you can get them for free. I've seen in the past people say you can order up loads of mailing bags um, and turn them inside out and use them and all of this. I would be very careful ordering stock that you're not actually using through your account because they can shut you down really quick for that. But yes, you can get six by four labels for free if you are using them with your click and drop account. Um, so definitely yeah. do that. I've, I've bought stuff off eBay before, cheap items like uh, replacement cables, HDMI, stuff like that. And they come in an, in an inside out special delivery bag, you know, the silvery yeah. ones. Yeah. And I'm always I mean, like, that's iffy, that is. I've seen people recommend you do that to get free um, mailing bags. And it's a slippery slope to get a new yeah. Royal Mail account shut down very quick. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. I but the free labels are great. I mean, I, I literally print everything on these free labels now. Now I've got the uh, zebra printer thing. Um, even like packing slips and everything goes, you know, everything gets printed on a label. I heard they're really good, those zebra printers. I've, I heard they come highly recommended. Yeah. They're I expensive. Love, I love mine. And just don't let Nick set it up for you because he does weird things and. <laughs> Or no, don't I'll, get any dodgy labels off I'll Nick. I'll give you an, enough lot of labels that doesn't work, and then you go and buy a new printer head because my labels were crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm never going to live that down. That's fine. I managed to sell the, the, it on anyway, so it's no trouble. Oh, Simon, Simon's message back and says, I'm hoping to get the book complete by the end of January. Wow. Hats off to you. I am so slow at getting projects completed. That is epic. We must um, hook up then in next month or something and have a chat. Kelly's just asked a question. Uh, you see new resellers picking up crap items week after week to try and resell. Do you say anything? It's an interesting question. I'm never quite sure whether I... Again, it's kind of like your mileage may vary. So just because I wouldn't buy it doesn't mean you can't sell it. Mm. So is it is it only crap in my opinion or is it actual crap? And if I stick my nose in where it's not wanted... Am, am I going around going, I'm a better reseller than you, so you should listen to me? Because I don't believe I'm a better reseller than anyone, really. So it's, it's I, kind of, I kind of sit back and go, oh, I hope you can sell that. I don't think I'd have bought it to myself, really. Yeah, I'd think it to myself, because there's a, a, a thing where people shoot the messenger as well, don't they? Mm. I think there's been a few posts where there's been a couple I've commented on where they've taken a picture of a load of video games, says, I bought a bundle of video games. Are these any good? Yeah. And I've been brutally honest sometimes and said, that one is, the rest I've been sort of thing. But if they ask for that, then fine. Otherwise, when it's a look at my wonderful haul and I'm looking at it thinking, I'm still looking, I'm still looking, there's nothing there. Oh. I won't make a comment because, you know, they're happy with it. And surely they need to go through that as we all did, list a load of crap, struggle to sell it at profit. And then that's the learning curve that clearly they needed to go through. I think if everyone said, you bought a load of old crap there, it would just destroy their confidence straight away. And it's not really helpful. Um, and I think it is helpful to go through the rigmarole of listing a load of stuff that doesn't actually make you any money because you won't do it again, hopefully. And I'm sure yeah. people would look at the stuff I buy and go, why the hell has she bought that load of rubbish? I'm sure they would. I don't care. I'm with that. you. What, like? I've been with you in doing that. I've been with you at the car boot sale going, what the hell are you buying? And then two weeks later in a sales video, whatever, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. like you with that ratty old bundle of Christmas decorations. I'm like, why are you buying that shit for? 
And you're like, oh, yeah, sold that for £27 within seven seconds. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I know, crazy, isn't it? <laughs> I've seen people actively slagging off certain items that I still do incredibly well on. And I'm thinking, well, mm. fair enough. That's You don't pick them up, leave them for me. That's fine. Yeah, no money in board games. Yeah, board games are rubbish. <laughs> no money in board games. Especially Funko ones with uh, cut covers, uh, cut boards. The dodgy. The ones, that with the, the ones with the boards cut in half, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that on that show. <laughs> oh, eBay message. Oh, dare I open it. Don't do, don't do it. Don't do it. Good, bad, or indifferent. Oh, hang on. Oh, so I had one. Common sense. It'd be nice oh. if the buyers employed some, wouldn't it? Because I had a message earlier on saying, "Where will this skirt come to on me?" <laughs> <laughs> the, to your head, love. Your head. <laughs> the eBay message says, "Hi, Nick and Andrea. I'm enjoying the live chat right now. <laughs> Didn't know how to connect, so I thought I'd find." Um, find you a message on ebay thanks for that but um on a slightly serious note can if people see an item that they are interested in buying like um recently this has happened a couple of times and people have messaged me on ebay to try and arrange a sale of an item that's not listed on ebay very easily that could be flagged up as trying to arrange a sale outside of ebay that's fine just a hello although you can contact contact me a lot easier right here on youtube just drop a comment i will see it and i will reply to it or even better on facebook um so if you've got questions or you're interested in an item don't message me that on ebay because i could get in a whole lot of trouble please yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I i had um i'm just trying to find it i had a, a good message the other day it was a, a 4.99 sales so i'm trying to blow some stock out and they bought it and literally within 30 seconds of of the messaging like this they were like saying um when is this item being dispatched why haven't you left me feedback and it's like because you've just bought it <laughs> I, i've just barely looked picked up my phone it's like flipping it calm down love it's yeah. crazy well we get people who message like on a sunday evening asking lots of questions about when their thing's being shipped why isn't it marked as dispatched yet or whatever and i'm like because you bought it on a sunday morning funnily enough i'm not working i haven't even looked at my sale it's like you know they think because it's the internet everything happens instantly and the item will be instantly packaged and taken to the post office office which That's is closed <laughs> which is closed on a sunday so it's not going to happen today but i mean talking about going back to the common sense thing that we were talking about there are so many buyers that need a big dollop of common sense some of the questions we've all had them i'm sure sometimes i have to read them three times just to think did they really ask that question it's just yeah mind numbing what people will ask have you guys had any examples of that? go on sorry the classic one as a clothing seller is you know i put the measurements of the clothing in every single one of my listings i had someone um ask me could you re-measure this skirt for me just to make sure that it that is the size because i'm not sure it'll fit me it's like love it hasn't <laughs> changed since i measured it it hasn't gone anywhere it hasn't been in the washing machine it hasn't been worn it is still exactly the same size as when i measured it it's you that's changed <laughs> yeah darren says there i had one before christmas saying will this go with my son's other toys <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've had we've had messages well andrea more because she deals with the clothing asking will this fit me we've had that question a number of times will this fit me yeah. we're like <laughs> where do you go with that question how do you answer that i would say yes <laughs> yes it will <laughs> i'll say no it looks awful on you don't you dare <laughs> I, I had another one here which was literally sent straight after uh, okay get the kaching through and a message straight away and it was like it was like a five six quid sale hi just letting you know payment has been made we'll send you feedback on the arrival of the item thanks for now ken and it's like you didn't need to tell me that i know and I, I know it's like because i'm like oh god there's a message i need to check this and it's just a total waste of time it's like yeah i know you've paid me i've had the notification mate it's just <laughs> weird it's, it, it's like just use a bit of now so you don't need to like double check everything it's just weird sometimes that's only because when you get a, that message noise panic station sets yeah. in don't it yeah oh yeah there's nothing quite like that ebay message noise 
I is wish I could change it. When you have a message and you recognize the username as someone you've recently sold to. Oh. Mm. That sinking feeling. And then maybe sort of 40% of them you open and they say, thank you, it's lovely. And you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could change that noise on my phone to be something different. to Because it makes that noise the same as if uh, a watched item has yeah. been released. Like, I wish it could be like, wah, 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 or something like that. You know, just totally different. Just so I know what it is. Yeah, or the Darth Vader theme. I wish you could change it. People are replying to the uh, the message, will this fit me? Uh, also, will you take less? Will my bum look big in this? Oh, yes, certainly. Or send me send me a pic of you in your undies and I'll let you know, says LJ. <laughs> uh, Hugh was recently asked what length an 18-inch chain was. <laughs> wow. Um, Twice as long as a nine-inch one. Okay. Exactly. Daisy May, question from buyer. If I don't like this, can I return it? Uh, answer, it's advertisers with returns. And B, welcome to blocked bidder list. Yeah, we do have that option of blocking bidders. Um, the only time I do that in advance is if it's a, a cheaper item and someone asks a ludicrous amount of questions before mm. buying it. Yeah. Yeah, you get the feeling when someone's going to be trouble, don't you? Yeah. yeah, they ask a lot of questions. They ask you to ship it out straight away that day because I'm in urgent need of it. We had one recently. It's just so annoying. Um, your your item says small, but I need a medium, says Starly. Um, I'm not a magician. Exactly. <laughs> Is this a big 10 or a small 10? <laughs> wow. I imagine you yeah, get it quite a lot with clothes, that sort of thing. I, I don't get so many silly questions, really. So I'm just reading in the chat. Although I used to get a lot of silly questions when I sold, like, broken games consoles and stuff like that, things that were for spares or repairs. And I, I avoid it like the plague now selling... If I do do spares or repairs, I'll, I'll job lot them. Because if you're selling it individually... The amount of people who've not read the giant text in the thing, spares or repairs, does not work in the item specifics, in the uh, condition notes, in the thing. And I went to the extent of even having a note on each photograph that says does not work. They still they still got stuff and went, this doesn't work, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had that one. I've had that one. I'm put in the title in capitals, does not work, at the beginning of the listing, and still somebody wanted to return it because they couldn't make it work. <laughs> like, well, what what were they expecting? It's funny you should say about job lotting um, broken consoles. When we closed the, the shop down, which was probably 60, 70% a gaming shop, in the basement, it was just like a graveyard of returned consoles, consoles that some people tried to sell to me. Funnily enough, when I tested them, they were dead. So they just left it on the counter i got so many consoles that way when we closed the shop i had crates and crates of dead consoles mostly xbox uh 360s and playstation yeah. 2s and i job lotted them and they went so well i made so much money out of dead consoles it was silly but that was in well, job lot. That was like 20 30 at a time there's a bloke who goes around my local car boot who buys playstation 2s and it doesn't he, he doesn't care if they work or not but I think he takes the gold out of them or something. Um, and also he buys the the red-ringed um, 360s as well. Yeah. There is a viewer formerly known as Sib K in the chat, now masquerading under the name of Marge Sibson. Haven't seen you for a long time, Sib K. I hope you're well. Oh, yeah. I think I read a comment from Marge earlier. I didn't even realise it was Sibson. <laughs> <laughs> he got me that way when he came in as Sybil Shepherd. I, I, I'd got all the way through a video before I realised it was him. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, we've been on almost an hour. We'll start wrapping this one up soon. Um, if you've got any more ex examples of lack of common sense, uh, drop them in. They're fascinating to read. Who, who was ka in then? 
that was me. No. Two kachings in one video. I had a kaching, but mine's turned off because I keep mine on silent. <laughs> well, you would say that, but unfortunately, no kaching, no believe. I'll, I'll show you. No. <laughs> I'll screenshot you and send it, yeah? No, I won't believe you. I'll believe that you've photoshopped it. <laughs> okay. I can't photoshop. I'm useless at that. People are asking where Zaheer is. Uh, I'm not sure. He messaged to say he couldn't make it. I didn't get an explanation, so I don't know. My but guess is either Burger King or KFC. I was going to say KFC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, out, he's out bashing, maybe. Bashing in the woods. Bashing what? That's what they call it when you do the remote control cars. It's called bashing. Oh, is whatever. it bashing in the woods? Is that is that really what it's called? Or are you getting confused? <laughs> that's something completely that's different. Something I'm sure it's called bashing. Someone in the chat could correct me. Is it called bashing? I feel yeah. like it's something else. Cottaging. No, that's, that's right. definitely something else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's bashing. Definitely. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> she has <laughs> off now. I think you you've killed off Carla. There's that cough again. <laughs> yeah, Darren agrees that he's been also been bashing the bashing in the woods. He apparently prefers dogging. Yeah. I'm only going by what I'm being told here. Cupping. Oh, no, Nick. Nick, Nick the, Nick's the one that's doing the cupping, aren't you? Nick, I've got you? a whole kit for that now. Nah, I'm <laughs> out. <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I, I thought it was bashing. People who validated me, yeah, it's called bashing. Taking your, So this is taking your, your remote control vehicle and playing in the woods is called bashing? Yeah, and it's like not trying to bre break it, but like doing, you know, bashing it about, really. That doesn't make I it sound any better. Men do that. I bet that's a thing that only boys do. You odd, odd, odd species, you. I, I'd, call, I'd name a remote control car the bishop, though. <laughs> you could go out and bash a bishop in the woods. Oh dear, yeah. All right, love, I'm just popping out to bash a bishop. I'll be back shortly. That's all, all shades are wrong, that is, Tom. All yeah. shades are wrong. Okay, well, I was just reading in the chat. There was a couple more. Um, Starley says, I see you have marked the item as dispatch, but the tracking is not live. I only bought it five minutes ago. Explain. Yes, because funnily enough, I haven't packaged it and <laughs> got the tracking yet. People are amazing, aren't they? I bet that was on a Sunday evening as well. Like you're sitting there waiting yeah. for orders to come in with your tape. <laughs> come on. Yeah. Will you take less is suggesting there's a here is a Heathrow stopping planes? <laughs> <laughs> wow. And Darren says apparently you go to the woods, slap it against a tree and see how long before something falls off. Wow. <laughs> That's how they do it in Essex, Darren. Yeah. That's why Darren's not in the chat tonight, then, obviously. <laughs> okay, well, I think we'll wrap this one up. In conclusion, uh, a modicum of common sense is handy. Um, I'm not sure how much we've got combined, but we're doing okay because we managed to sell stuff on the internet. So that's the yeah. conclusion. Yeah, so, so we're just like, you should have common sense, but we're managing all right without it. Jolly yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just trust your gut. That's, that's my advice. Yeah. Absolutely. So thank you for joining us. Thanks for all your comments in the chat. And thanks to our guests, Lex and Little Pussycat. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for joining us, Sue. Thank you very much. Yes. And okay. bye, everybody. We'll get you in for another chat soon, hopefully. Lovely. Thanks, Carla. I hope you're feeling 100% soon. Thank you. Enjoy as ever. And Tom, thanks for popping in for the last yeah. half. Yeah, sorry I couldn't uh, join in sooner. I, I too have been dying because of sharing Pringles with the Carla. So, uh, so who did the lurgy come from? I don't from? share Pringles with you. If you stole my Pringles, that's an entirely different thing. I don't share food. Look at the size of me. Do I look like I share food? I seem to remember you having a moment of weakness and offering me some Pringles. So. You sure it was me? Yeah, no, that did happen, sure. Carla. That did happen. What flavour were they? They were salt. The, the original ones. Yeah, I probably got bored halfway down the tube. It's it's when Nick was firing rubber bands at your face. So you probably <laughs> I was distracted by cost. imminent death. Yeah. Oh, yeah. in, in, the, in the secret pub, we had to go yeah. through a special doorway. That was amazing. Yeah, with the morgue downstairs masquerading as some toilets. 
Yeah, oh, this is fine. this is sounding a lot weirder than it was. Anyway, <laughs> thank you, everyone. Um, you. We will see you again next week uh, on Zahir's channel, hopefully, if he's about and he's not a Heathrow. Until then, <laughs> take care and check out Bye. everybody's channels. After this is off air, I will link everybody's channels below. Uh, so go and check them out. If you're not sub to Lex, we need to get Lex to a thousand by this time next week. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. That's your homework. Yeah. Bye, everybody.